Hey, welcome to another episode of Hooks and Ladders. My name is Blair Packham. And my name is Alistair Bradley. We're going to talk about workshopping your songs and what that means. You know, you see songwriting workshops. Uh, ours is one of them, Song Studio, of course. But uh, you might think, well, what's a workshop? A workshop is a place filled with sawdust and tools and so forth. But it's more of a metaphor. And uh, so the idea is is that you're you're going to work on your songs. But what does that what does that mean if you go a little deeper? What does it mean, Alistair? What does it mean? Well, what it, what it means to us, and you know, when when we do it, is we're putting you in the room with another fresh set of ears. Uh, and you know, you could workshop your songs with anybody who hasn't heard the song before, and and get their impression and and get their feedback on what strikes them, and you know, maybe what bores them. Hopefully, there's not much that bores them. But but we take workshopping a step further, don't we? And and that fresh set of ears is not just a music lover, but a professional songwriter. So, you know, we found I've I've always found that taking one of my songs to somebody who hey, maybe is even a better songwriter than me, uh, and saying, hey, what would you do with this next? That's, that's what we're talking about when we talk about workshopping your songs. Yeah, and I think it's, it's not necessarily even someone who's better than you as a songwriter. It's someone who, who is sort of trained or has trained themselves to listen for certain aspects uh, of songwriting. Um, in a way, becoming that person for a lot of other people has kind of ruined music for me, or it, it did for a while, because I became really analytical. Um, I'd be listening for, you know, well, is it too long? Am I getting bored? I was always checking myself, like checking my own pulse when it came to that song. Um, you know, am I, am I uh, losing interest um, or am I confused by something? Is there a word that threw me? Um, you know, whatever those things are. And, and so if you, if you can connect with somebody uh, who can help you in that way, who can be that specific, it can be really useful. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and sometimes, like, like you say, it doesn't have to be somebody who's a better songwriter than you. Um, hopefully it's somebody who can help you get to the bottom of something that you might be able to change. In your yeah. songs, so if even if it is just a music lover, you can get a valuable insight from them about about what points of the song kind of lose their interest and what points of your song are really great in their eyes. Yeah, the only danger with having somebody who's a music lover uh, who maybe is your mom or um, you know your your partner, your romantic partner, or whatever, or or just a friend, is if if they're what I would call a civilian meaning they don't make music for, for a living. They're not enlisted in the music-making army. I don't know how far that metaphor can go. <laughs> uh, but if, if, they're, if they're coming at it completely from the point of view of, of an audience, they may get caught up in your voice. And if you have a particularly beautiful singing voice, they're going to pronounce whatever you do beautiful and, and fantastic. And that may be true of your singing, but it may not be true of your songwriting. They're not the same thing. And... Um, so, and I do think that, that people who are great singers, until they learn not to, they tend to coast because they could sing literally anything and people would think, oh my gosh, that is just the most beautiful thing I've ever heard. And, and, but it doesn't, it's not helpful when it comes to, you know, making the song itself communicate better. I think you've heard me call that the curse before, haven't you? Uh, yeah. A yeah. songwriter who is also a performer, if, if they are... Uh, if they have a beautiful singing voice or if they're just electric on stage or if they're really good looking, that that tends to give them an edge in entertaining an audience that prevents them from knowing how hard their song is hitting that audience. Yeah. Yeah. The song so in its in its, you know, uh, raw form. Somebody cynical might say, well, so what? Great, good for them. But if you want the song to stand on its own and to be able to be covered by other people uh, and have a life that goes on beyond you know, your own uh, use of it, um, it's really important, I think, that the writing be great as well. And you know, we know it when, we, you know, Celine Dion, for instance, an incredible singer, but she also has incredible material. Whether you're a fan or not, those songs are beautifully written and, and, uh, and, and usually push all the right buttons for, for emotions, you know, which is one of the complaints people who don't like her have. It, they feel manipulated, but millions and millions of people don't mind that manipulation at all because the songs are bulletproof. They, they do all the, all the things they're supposed to do. Yeah, yeah. So given the ability to sit in a room with somebody who not only 
can listen to your song and say, oh, you know, I really like this part and that part, eh, it doesn't do anything for me. But also somebody who might be able to say, you know, if I were you, I would do this in your B section. I would do this in your bridge. Um, that, that could be hugely valuable. Yes. Have, having a songwriter. Yeah. Give you there, especially if it's a songwriter you've never met who doesn't love you uh, for any other reason than, you know, you have that in common that you're a songwriter. <laughs> That's right. That, that, you know, is, is really, really helpful. And, you know, the thing I try and convince people of who have never workshopped a song, um, because usually they're, they have a bit of anxiety about it, uh, which is understandable. You know, your, your, sometimes your innermost thoughts and feelings, uh, are going to be exposed, um, and maybe taken apart. And I can understand why that would be anxiety uh, inducing, but, the great thing about songwriting, as I've said a million times, is you can always go back. If somebody tears apart your song and you as the songwriter try it in that new form, because that's very important that you try it, you give it a go, you, you see if it works. And if, it, if you decide it doesn't work, you can go back. Nothing's been ruined. Nothing has changed permanently. It's just something to try. Something that even in the trying will expand your brain and will teach you stuff about your next song. It's a pretty magical process, actually. <laughs> Workshop. This is, this is great. You're uh, you're anticipating the questions I was going to throw at you. Uh, right. I, I was going to say, why would you want to do this? And I think we've already covered that. Um, but I was also going to ask, what what does a songwriter do with the feedback? And and I think you know that's exactly uh, what I would say in, in in response to that question is is you try it, but you don't feel bound to it. If oh. you know. If if a songwriter suggests, well, I think you should try this. I think you should. It could be something as simple as I think I think this song should be faster, or I think this song should be slower. You can get you know a, a simple suggestion like that. You try it. And, yeah. And, and if it doesn't work, and and don't be defensive. You know that being defensive when it comes to uh, creating art. Well, actually, being defensive generally in life is not a useful position to to take. Um, but being defensive when, when you're seeking consultation, you know, um, I, I, you know, the magical thing about the song studio, uh, set up the way we do it is where we have multiple mentors and you join a different group. You can bring the same song to multiple mentors. And if there's a consensus, let's say you have three mentors and you play the same song for them. And each of them says it's too long. The chorus takes too long to get there. The, there's no bridge and it really could use a bridge. Well, if all three of those mentors are saying that, saying that, you should probably try those things. You should probably try, you know, to, to incorporate those, those changes. Again, if you don't like it, all, you know, three mentors can be wrong. There's no question, you know, and you as the artist have the, have the ultimate say for sure. But, um, but it's worth trying because what, what are we trying to do when we write songs? We're trying to move people. We're trying to touch people. And if those three people who are really have their, their songwriting radar uh, on high alert, if they're not getting what you're trying to put across, maybe their opinion is valid. I think it's important to recognize that. Um, I think it's too easy to, to dismiss. You know, there are, there are songwriters who dismiss the whole idea of rewriting. They dis dismiss the whole idea of workshopping songs. You know, they, they have uh, what I consider a romantic notion of, of songwriting being done by an, by, by an individual who is, you know, tortured, maybe, um, and uh, who is creating music in a garret. Um, I'm not quite sure what a garret is. I think it's a, a room at the top of a castle is how I imagine it. But, you know, they it's a, it's a romantic notion of, you know, like well, great art is, is not created by committee. I get that. I do get that. But I do think that you are trying to make people feel something. And if that's the case, then checking it out with some people before you consider it finished is probably a good idea. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, how, how close are we to the, to the song by the time we let somebody else hear it? We've, well, we've, we've written it and maybe we've re rewritten some of it, but we've at least, we've played it, you know, enough times that it's super familiar to us. And we've lost a bit of the objectivity that comes with that first listen. So getting the chance to have somebody experience that first listen and give you their impression. I've had uh, people at Song Studio Workshop uh, play songs for me. And then I've said, not because I haven't 
any idea at all, but but because I wanted some reinforcement, I've said, okay, now, can you tell me in a sentence what that song is about? What are you getting at in that song? And they've been amazed that I didn't get it. Now, it's not necessarily the case that I didn't get it completely, but maybe I wasn't sure. You don't have to be sure. Songs are songs can be obscure. Songs can be impressionistic. There's no question. And some of the some of my favorite songs are like that. Strawberry Fields Forever by the Beatles. You know, it's it's not entirely clear what's going on there. But at the same time, if you love that song, it's pretty clear, you know, even though saying it out loud to somebody else, it's like, I think what he's saying is, you know, this and this. But but anyway, this the person I'm thinking of was shocked that I didn't get that the song was about her father and how about how her father did this and did that um, and, and that, you know, that she was grateful for. I had no idea. It never said father. It never said anything about the relationship between the two. It was just directed to a you. And, and that's fine. That's absolutely fine. But she was amazed because she felt everybody and anybody could get it. And that's the problem with, you know, keeping it all within your, yourself. You, uh, you know, you, you never really get a clear idea on, on what other people are thinking because you already know. You know what it's about. You know what your intention is. I think workshopping a song can help bring out that intention. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've personally had those same experiences where I workshop a song with somebody and, and their response is, yeah, I, you know, I really like what you're doing here. I'm intrigued by what you're doing here, but I just don't get it. And I went into the, I went into the meeting thinking, oh yeah, they're going to get it. So yeah. it was, it was great. It was, uh, it was great feedback. I, I have two other questions I would pose to you okay. on workshopping. Um, and one of them is, when would you want to do this? When's the right time to workshop your song? I think, I think you can be really practical about it and you could decide, you know what, I'm going to release a song this year or I'm going to release an album this year or an EP or something like that. I'm going to put some music out in the world or I'm going to play, uh, you know, I'm going to, maybe I'm writing a musical and I want to see how these songs fit together, whatever. When there's a project, it can be really useful to workshop songs because then you have an intention, you know where you're going and you know what's required of those songs. So workshopping songs at that point can be really great. You can prepare, you know, before spending a lot of money recording in a recording studio, for instance, it probably makes sense to have some professional advice, you know, have some some people to bounce the songs off of. Even if you reject all of the advice, at least you'll know what certain people will be thinking, you know. Um, but I also think you could workshop songs at any time, really, uh, just, you know, to help your, help develop your craft, to develop your own aesthetic so that, you know, if they bring up things like, um, if again, you get a consensus, it's too slow. It needs to be sped up somehow, speed it up. Um, you might look at your, your other songs that you're writing and think, are my songs generally slow? You know, is that something I should look at? You know, it might, uh, it might twig some questions for you about your other material, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, and, uh, when you talk about writing, you know, for a project, even even if you think, hey, I want to send my song into this songwriting competition, it wouldn't hurt at all to have some fresh ears on it before you say, oh, this is this is done enough to submit to a songwriting competition. Yeah, yeah. I I, I wrote a song uh, and played it on Facebook a little while ago. Just I do that sometimes. I finish and I'm pleased with myself. So I I you know just me and my guitar and I played it and uh, I think it was really well written. You know, you can write a really well-written song that still doesn't do the trick for some reason, you know, because, you know, the point of the song is to move people and people generally aren't moved by structure and they're not moved by perfect rhymes and they're not moved, you know, in and of themselves. They're moved by the effect of those things. And, uh, and uh, uh, the song was, uh, it was a love song, but it was addressing the moon as the sort of intermediary in this love triangle sort of, you know. And um, all the comments were pleasant and nice and com you know complimentary and so forth you know and I sang it pretty well so people said that and that was nice but one person said so it was a woman and she said hey buddy if you really want to you know get the woman's attention stop singing to the moon and sing to her and although that makes the song a little more ordinary because there are more songs sung to the 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 
object of desire than, than our song to the moon. Um, she had a point and I rewrote it and it's way better. So in a sense, I workshopped that song with the internet. <laughs> Wasn't it Ralph Murphy that used to say, uh, uh, you know, women account for half the sales in the music industry and the other half come from their boyfriends telling them, to, no, the other half is, is them telling their boyfriends to buy something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Well, he, yeah. And of course, Ralph came from an earlier era and a lot of what he has to say is totally relevant today. But he did talk about housewives being the biggest radio audience and, and stuff like that. And I thought, well, I'm not sure housewives are a, 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 as big a demographic as they might have been in, in Ralph's day. Um, but uh, but he, I think he has a point, um, certainly with songs that are meant to be, you know, sort of nakedly emotional. I think there there's a large audience of of women, if one may generalize. So yeah, in in any case, this person who gave me that advice, I think she was right on, bang on, and uh, and I think the song's better as a result. So, but anyway, yeah, yeah workshopping is uh, it, it's it's uh, I think it's a really really good thing to do, and, and you know you can walk away from a workshop experience once you've tried the work, and maybe out of five ideas, you pick three. Uh, you know, or you try all five, but then you you decide, you know what, I, these three ideas are are great. You can walk away feeling really strongly about these songs. You know, you can you can feel like, I've, okay, I've done everything I can to make these songs great, which is a great feeling before you release something. I'll I'll say this: one thing that I think workshopping is not, which which I. I hope uh, we don't have songwriters entering into a workshop thinking that they're going to get this out of it. Workshopping is not co-writing. Right, right. So, so you know, when, when you say, you know, you could workshop a song at any time in its development, um, I wouldn't recommend that anybody goes into a workshop thinking that they're going to get fresh ideas to inject into their song. Um, and certainly when we workshop songs, uh, at song studio and and when you and I do it outside of song studio we we never have we never do it with the intention of becoming a co-writer of the song no it's it's with the intention of helping you as a songwriter you know i i do, been do the next step right the next step right i've been involved with workshops where the uh where one of the other mentors has made a material contribution to the song and has said to the songwriter um whose song is being workshopped, would you, with these ideas in hand, this is starting to cross into co-writing territory, would you consider, um, you know, because I would be interested in working on this further with you, but, you know, it's starting to get into where I'm actually contributing big swaths of material to your song. And and in, in all the cases that I'm aware of, the, the, um, the workshopper, said yes you know but it's not something i'm generally interested in doing uh, myself as a workshopper i'd rather just say yeah this this and this try that you know and then leave it and move on <laughs> but uh but you know sometimes it it does go that way but i don't think that's the intention of a workshop a workshop is meant meant to be an opportunity to bounce your songs off other people mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah i do i do know of one occasion at song studio where where one of our songwriters was insistent upon sharing uh, songwriting credit with with the mentor, and the mentor said, "No, no, I'm not." But uh, but the songwriter <laughs> insisted, so it, I think it happened. <laughs> but <laughs> well, in that case, maybe they uh, the uh, workshopper wanted to have a co-write with that renowned songwriter. Maybe. Yeah. Well, yeah, maybe. Who knows? But I'm I'm not looking for that. Just so you know, folks. Um, Anyway, I guess we better wrap it up. I think I answered uh, your questions and you answered mine. So, Yes, yeah. I, I know all I ever wanted to know about uh, song workshopping. Right. I am definitely pro-workshopping, just, mm -hmm. just to be clear. You guys should join our mailing list if you want to find out more about what we're up to. Um, we're at songstudio.ca. And uh, there's a mailing list, but there's also other activities and other, other stuff going on there. You should check it out. 